Hey, it's Mike here. And Lindy. And this is TIY. The Tiny It Yourself channel. And today we're gonna do our spray foam. We're gonna show you how to prep the wall. We're gonna have the company come over and do all of the actual spraying. And why we chose spray foam over other types of insulation. All right, let's do it. Follow us along. We have the spray foam company coming tomorrow early in the morning and we have a bit of a unique situation with our driveway where we need to drive all the way down it and they can meet us. And that's because there's a garage and kind of a kink in the driveway and they have a 28 foot trailer so they can't come all the way in. And so we'll show you the whole process from start to finish. All right, so everything that we did to prep here was covering every single outlet and switch in masking tape. And that way the spray foam won't go inside of the gang boxes themselves. And we also did the lights in that same situation. And since I already wired these, I just let them hang down. Hopefully it'll be all right. And then another thing we did was cover this in plastic and hopefully we'll be able to reuse this a couple times when we paint later on. Since there can be some sort of overspray with the spray foam, you wanna make sure any finished surface that's nice is completely covered. We tried to tape it, but to no avail. So we decided to actually use these staples as you can see here. So you first have to actually tape around these and then you can just staple one into the wall. Otherwise you would have to do each individual one. So this is enough to hold the tension of these back to the wall. And once again, it's imperative that you tack these down because the spray foam can actually push these out further past the wall and you don't want that. And I want to mention really quickly that you do not want to get a staple with a nail that goes further than your sheathing is deep. And so we have half inch sheathing and this goes about half an inch. And if it went any further, it might pierce the membrane on the outside. So for a quick pan of our preparation, you can see we covered that outlet. We taped all of the mini split lines together so that they wouldn't fly out. And then moving over here, we did all of those lights and made sure that they were covered and everything's basically ready to go. All of the wires everywhere have staples pushing them against the wall as well. Another good thing to do before you tape over your outlets is to actually test the circuits and make sure that they work. This one isn't in a wall, so it doesn't need to be taped over, but you'd wanna do that obviously before you spray foam because then you would have to dig into the wall and that's a whole big headache. We need to clear everything out of here so that they can work in here and that means all the tools, the vacuum, and everything. So here's our current hitch situation. We don't currently have a truck so we're renting a U-Haul. We're using a 2 and 5 16 inch hitch which just goes in the U-Haul back like this and then we're going to drive this and hook that up to the front of our tiny house which I'll show you here. Okay here's the hitch on our tiny house which is the very front where we'll be hooking our U-Haul up. As you can see there's literally debris everywhere on the ground so that's part of the process of getting it ready. We have to clear all of this out. You can see it's getting dark but we cleared out everything from underneath and we are ready to launch and so I'll see you tomorrow. Not a morning person, my brain hurts, but look. Got the U-Haul completely hooked up, everything's looking good. There's our hitch, mostly set up. And then, something that we've never even seen before is the house completely cleared out. This is like a totally new concept to us. Check it out from over here. Whoa, feels huge. It's not gonna feel this big in the end, but pretty crazy. All right, this is our first time attempting to move the tiny house. Pretty scary. Oh, wow, there she goes. Sounds really creaky. All right, so I trimmed these trees and I only had a little stick to see how high to go. So we're gonna see how much damage we're gonna do to the tiny house. Hopefully none. Maybe a little bit on the top right there. Keep it coming. Okay, so this is the final resting spot for our tiny house, at least for the spray foam insulation. As you can see to the left of it, our driveway has a big curve right here. So it makes it really difficult for longer vehicles like semis or trailers to get through. So they're basically parked right there and they're gonna run a really long hose to our tiny house. So this is kind of frustrating. They actually were able to back the trailer into our driveway. So we really moved the tiny house for no reason which makes me kind of annoyed, but at the same time, we really did need to see if it was even doable to move uh -huh. it, so that was pretty exciting. Not only did they pull in, they backed in around the garage. It's looking pretty good. Got these guys over here in the rig. There they are, getting ready to spray. They gotta come around a sort of interesting nook here and pull the hose over. The trees are a little bit in the way, but they can get to the door. The lighting isn't perfect, but this is a last look at the wall before it is covered. As you can see, it's a crazy monster where the electrical comes out. Got a big thing coming around here. Probably could have done some better tree work here, but it's kind of nice. 
All right, since someone's going to comment anyway, yeah, the chains are not attached to the truck. Definitely best practice. We just went like 200 feet, so we're like, whatever. Okay, so you guys don't even know the depth of the panic attacks that I've been having. That the thing is going to be too tall, but I just measured that corner to the actual ground, and the back is a little bit high, and it was 13 foot one, and so I'm feeling really good right now because I was afraid it was going to be closer to 13 foot six, which is the maximum, and so any bridges that have been resurfaced, if we're close to that, could totally ruin my life. So it begins. Coming along. Okay, so the other great thing about having a super long driveway is now we have to back our tiny house up the length of the driveway, which it is not very short here. We'll see if Mikey has the skills to complete this task. Just to give you an overview, it's to go all the way back up there. All right, and here is the after shot after it is insulated. It looks pretty good. Really gives you a sense of what the walls are going to be like, which is awesome. And there's the bathroom side. It's looking pretty sweet. All right, so everything's looking pretty good. There is one little thing that happened here, and it was pretty much my fault, where the tube, the drain line from the mini split, was cut because what happened was it wasn't anchored well enough. It was just taped lightly with some electrical tape, and then this stuff expands like violently when you spray it, and so it pushed it really far forward, but not enough to see on the outside. So when they went to cut it, you know, it was just below the surface, and it got nipped, but it's all right because I actually already have some extra tube that I'm just going to attach that way. Much everything else worked out perfectly, though this energy recovery ventilator was fully protected by just some tape and one little piece of plastic, and so I'm happy about that. Just because I'm a super perfectionist, I'm going to go ahead and do some fill-in spray foam, like right here, because of the angle they ended up cutting maybe a little bit too much out, as you can see by that sort of triangle cut out, and so I don't want to lose that insulation. I will say they went 100% above and beyond by spray foaming the window gap. I was expecting to do that later but they did it, so I'm super happy about it. So just have to comment that there's a little phenomenon happening here with the white and the dark diagonal boxed in lines that reminds me of a Tudor house. Anyone else? And in general, my little plug covers with masking tape worked. Some of them, they got a little funky, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I can just sort of, yeah, yeah, we're totally good. Check it out. All right, now we're back here to talk a little bit about why we chose spray foam. What do you think? One of the reasons is because we had a lot of interesting cuts and angles because of our studs and just the unique design of our house. And we wanted a way to fill those easily instead of having to cut individual bats of insulation. Another reason, depending on the type, so there's open and there's closed cell, we got open. Um, it's good on the road. You don't want to get closed because of the jarring. It can actually end up cracking the foam. Um, we... But it is the case that if you have such a sturdy house, closed cell could be better if you're not moving it very right. often because right. it is higher R value or more insulation per inch, but then it's more dense and so it could potentially crack. You could also build your house so you have little sections. You know, like those two-part buses with the joint, you could add some joints in between the, the foam that was insulated so it doesn't crack and create a space. You can maybe like do a rubber seam or something. We're also doing so much of the work ourselves, we thought it would be good to have that part of it done by another company. Um, I don't know if you've ever worked with fiberglass insulation, but it is a pain. It gets everywhere. You get fiberglass splinters. And I know we're definitely going to get a little bit of hate for choosing a product that isn't super natural. We went with technically an eco spray foam, though that's probably a limited, <laughs> a limited title. And we like the idea of having something that was gonna last, right? And so if we had fiberglass, we might have to redo it sometime a lot sooner. And then that's actually more embodied energy and more, you know, CO2 emitted and stuff, so. By eco, he means I believe that it's soy based. One of the issues with spray foam is because it's not manufactured in a factory, it doesn't have the same standards as maybe batting that you would get. So when they mix it on site, they can have some undesirable chemical attributes, including off-gassing, um, which we will talk about. Yeah, in our ship lab video, I mentioned briefly what we did. And just to sum it up, we basically ended up sealing it in a really thin layer of plastic, which took some extra work. And that way it sealed in any type of you know VOCs or toxic things that were coming off, which I don't think there were much by the time we did that. But just to be completely safe as an insurance policy, because it's a small area. Yeah, and I'm chemically sensitive, so scents like that really bother me. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our spray foam video, and... Thanks for watching. Check out our other social media handles at our Instagram, tinyityourself. 
our only one other <laughs> handle. Check out our only handle. And that's it. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye.